In our level two example for time interval, we see that we have Aubrey, and she rode her bike from this time to this time. So it's pretty easy for us to recognize that this is the starting time, T0, and this was the time at the instant her motion was of no longer interest to us, um, of any interest to us, and we want to know the time interval, which is delta T. And we could draw a little bit of a, a line to help us visualize this. And we see 0, 4, 11, 24. And then later, 0, 4, 43, 17. And again, time can progress only in one direction from smaller times to larger times. And we're looking for delta T. We can list our, our givens. T0, 0, 4, 11, 24. And the instant at the end of our period of concern, 4317, and we are looking for delta T. <clears throat> and our formula, delta T equals T minus T naught. Well, looking at the numbers, we see they're both in the same hour, but they're different in terms of their minutes. When we look at the minutes and the seconds, those are different. So how we can, we, what we can do here is we can say, well, let's see, this is 11 minutes times 60, which will give us 660 seconds. Because there's 60, 60 seconds in every minute. And oh, let me just redo that here a little more slowly. We have 11 minutes times 60 seconds per minute. And those minutes cancel. We're left with, with 60 seconds. So 660 seconds plus there is 24 there are 24 more seconds so that gives us a start time of 684 seconds and if we do the same thing over here we have 43 minutes times 60 seconds per minute and what is that going to equal well we can flip open to our calculator and we can say 43 times 60 that is 2580 2,580 seconds, plus there are 17 more. And that's going to give us 2,597 seconds. So we cross those out there, and we can redefine these as this is 684 seconds, and this is 2,597 seconds. So what we did there... <clears throat> as we realized the only thing that differed was the minutes and seconds. We have to get them all into seconds because you can't just add minutes and seconds together in one unit. And we end up with new numbers that we can use for the total number of seconds. So our final was 2,597 seconds, and our starting was 684 seconds. And, of course, we are welcome to use a calculator if we would like. I recommend using, if you're not using your TI-84 calculator, to use Desmos Scientific, 2,597. Minus 684. Gives us 1,913. Equals 1,913 seconds. And that is our delta T. <clears throat> Now, some of you might say, well, do we have to convert it back into minutes? Absolutely not. Unless we are asked to do it, there's no reason to do it. Perfect. So we would leave it like that, except we do need to express it in scientific notation. That is far more useful to us than putting it in minutes and seconds. So we see the decimal place, one, two, three. Delta T then is 1.913 times 10 to the third seconds. Now, you should recognize that 10 to the third is the power of 10 for kilo. So we could write this as 1.913 kiloseconds, which is probably not a unit you've ever heard before. You've heard of milliseconds. We took our reaction times with milliseconds. Well, this is kiloseconds, thousand seconds. 1.913 thousand seconds is what that means. So now you see why it is that we are putting numbers in scientific notation because it then makes it easy for us to convert them to metric prefixes. So our purposes, though, now 
really at this at this level at this level in the core this point in the course is to just be able to get it in scientific notation but know that this is coming down the pike converting it to metric prefixes and if we look up to our pegasus you can see converting to si prefix at the end is the last uh, the last step